welcome back to another video if you haven't already please like comment and subscribe also hit that notification bell so you always know when i post okay so you already read this title this is going to be a makeup story time video i guess i don't know what the name is but whatever name you see down there that's the name it's going to be now i'm looking this way because that's where my camera is so if i look this way it's because i'm looking at my makeup so Y'all forgive me because my camera is like on this side. So I hope I'm looking dead at y'all while I'm talking. I don't know, but we finna find out. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, so as you see, I already did my eyebrows. I'm gonna be eating through this video, by the way, too, because the girl is hungry and I ain't gonna lie, I made a drink, a drink, okay. This is Pinnacle pineapple and orange juice shout out to miss sherry thank you for stopping by girl hooking your girl up anyway this is what i'm drinking on but drink responsibly y'all please drink responsibly i ain't responsible for nobody being responsible please mm -hmm. she put me on that that's really good okay so this is basically a story time about how i escaped an abusive relationship and i've been debating back and forth with myself like should i really do this video because I ain't trying to give that person too much shine because they really don't deserve it. But um, I figure why not? It's a lot of women out there that have been through abuse or are still going through abuse. So it's like, just I'm just gonna tell my truth. So um, I've already done my eyebrows. I put my foundation on. So what I'm going to do now is put on my eyeshadow crease because I'm gonna do a fall look you know i'm dressed for fall y'all so i might match this with a yellow so yeah it's my first time doing something yellow so y'all bear with me because we just winging this makeup thing today so i'm going to explain to y'all how i ended up in an abusive relationship and how i finally got out of it um so yeah uh i was 18 years old at the time living with my mom, trying to find my way, you know, young, 18, vibrant, you know, we don't leave it like that, but um, uh, one night I threw this party at my house, my mom was like, cool, you could go party at the house, but you know, I want everybody out, but at least by, you know, 1.30, she wasn't too strict about it, but you know, everybody at the house, so. She was like, I'll get you out to about 1.30. So I was like, all right, cool. Thanks, mom, whatever. So, um, an ex-friend of mine, and I'll explain later on down the line why she's an ex-friend, but an ex-friend of mine, you know, at the time she was dating this dude, you know, had friends or whatever, and she was like, oh, can I invite them over? Uh, her boyfriend just so happened to live down the street. So I was like, all right, cool. No problem, he'd come by. We got friends, bring them, because we need somebody to dance with. We need people to drink with. You don't want all girls at your party. I mean, y'all. Mm -hmm. So, after that, I'm going to go in with my 23 Perfect Matte Colors. And for foundation, I use the Mary Kay uh, Matte Foundation and Bronzer 5. Yes, bronze of power. So, you know, she brought the, the guys came by or whatever. And we had drinks. We were having a good time. We brought in. I had my friend Vanessa there. Well, my sissy put Vanessa there. Um Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in with this kind of like an orangey color and make that my favorite color. But um Yeah, so they came by whatever it was a good time i was more so hooked on the one dude he was puerto rican and black and i was like "Ooh, mommy like because i was into puerto rican dudes back then i was like yes you come here type of thing so me and him was pretty much vibing out through the whole party or whatever and you know we were dancing and just having a good time dancing on each other whatever you know how you do when you young y'all y'all not stupid i ain't gotta explain but anyway yeah me and him started like i said we started vibing out you know by the end of the party we was pretty much like linked 
and he asked you know how old are you i said i'm 18 he was like well i'm 28 and i'm like no oh, you never had no 28 year old i usually date guys that's my age you know you cute so i guess i should have stopped when he said that you know homeboy got out of prison for doing three years for selling dope but you know you're young and you dumb and you do stupid things so that didn't deter me i was like i like you you cute let's do this so we really like started like feeling each other we exchanged numbers you know it was like that summertime stuff you know what i mean anyway so um he was like genuinely sweet in the beginning. He was like super sweet. That's how they get you to. He was like super sweet, super down to earth. And hold on y'all, let me adjust this light cause I feel like it's a little too bright. Um, let me change it some. Let's see. Mm. And brighten it up just, oh shoot. Okay, let's brighten it up just a little bit. Okay, I hope that's good lighting. I don't know how to work this lighting stuff. Y'all gonna have to bear with me but anyway so um yeah he like was like blowing my mind and stuff coming through with the clutch you know what i'm saying showing me how a female is supposed to be treated and i had had that in a long time y'all cannot really see this it's coming up like pink but it's really like an orangey color I'm trying to find the right tunage but Y'all bear with me with the light stuff, cause I can't do this crap. Not the light. But anyway. So he, you know, if he didn't come by and see me, he always called me. If he didn't call me, he made a way to come by and see me. So, you know, you getting that type of attention. You like, hey. I'm do really feeling, you know, your girl, whatever. So after that, um, he ended up inviting me over to meet his his family, pretty much. You know what, y'all? I don't even have a yellow in here. I really don't. They like bright, vibrant colors. I have a smidge of a yellow. We're going to go with this and see how that looks. But for that middle, I'm going to go with a brown. Just to tone it down a little bit. But, um... Yeah, he he was like, I want you to meet my family or whatever. His grandma had lived in a basement apartment. God rest her Yeah, so his grandmother lived in a basement apartment. And, and that wasn't nothing in New Jersey, you know. It's basement apartments in Jersey. So I was like, okay, cool. This is nice or whatever. I met his sister and everybody. So, yeah, everything seemed okay at first. At first, it was all good, y'all. All good in the neighborhood. Okay. Sorry, I'm supposed to be looking here. It's hard. <laughs> it's so hard, y'all. Y'all gotta bear with me. It's weird looking over here. Over here. It's weird. But anyway. So, God was trying to warn me. But, um, I was not listening at all. One day, uh, he, he found out I knew how to braid hair. By the way, I did this. I'm going to show y'all when I'm done. But um, he knew I know how to braid hair or whatever. And he was like, you know, can you braid my hair? This was like maybe a month or two into the relationship. He was like, can you braid my hair? I was like, okay, cool. So one night we were sitting at his grandmama's house and I was braiding his hair. And I was, you know, spending the night or whatever. She was cool with it. And um, she was like, all right, don't hit this one. And he was like, oh, no, ma, no, this one is a good one. I'm sure that I heard that right. What you mean don't hit this one? But I heard it right. Don't hit this one. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And I was like, what you mean by that? It's like, oh, no, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And I'm like, huh. Should I be worried about you? Like, no, nah, it's not for you to worry about. We good, we good, we good. So I'm like, cool, whatever. Okay, now I'm about to put this yellow on my lid, that thing right here. It's like a real 
I hope this look right, y'all. I told y'all we winging this today. Wing, wing. Okay. So, yeah, he was like, no, 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 you good, you good. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Blah, blah, blah. So, I'm like, all right, cool. Everything's going good. Everything's going great. You know, his grandmother let me to the point where she's like, you know, if you need some place to stay, you know, if I got a home, you got a home. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, that made me feel really good. So I was like, dope. Like, that's really dope. Like, they really embraced me. Like, accepted me. Like, they really liked me. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, um, Tom, like I said, everything's going well. This is weird. This yellow is not. This is more white than anything, but guess what? We gonna rock with it today. It's not like this yellow. It's like a real, real light yellow, making it look white. So I'm probably gonna put some else on my lid. Um. So yeah, like she, you know, they like I said, they embraced me. They accepted me as a family member, so I was like pretty cool with them and stuff. So yeah, it was fun. So he ended up getting locked up or whatever over some stuff. I can't really remember what it was, to be honest with y'all. So he was like, um, he called me while I was at home and was like, tell, you know, whoever, be able to bail him out. Like, go to my grandma's house and tell them how much my bail is. And I was like, okay, cool. And he was like, love you. And I was like, oh shit, they didn't get just say he loved me. And I was like, well, love you too. Like, oh, what's the net? Like, this is for white people. Okay. So I decided to go in like with this reddish color right here next to that orange. So yeah, it's coming up pink, but it's reddish. Um so we uh, ended up telling the family what was going on, bringing around there, and it was like, okay, cool, we got you. That's how much it is, that's how much you're gonna get, whatever. So boom. My mom and I had a, like a big old argument, a big falling out because we had made up this deal where because now that I'm dating, I'll be able to have time with my dude. So it was like, okay, being I felt I think he was coming home that night. He was supposed to come home that night. So I was like, well, this is my weekend to spend a night with him. And she was like, well, I want to do this and I want to do that. I was like, well, mom, we had a deal. Like one weekend, I watch the kids for you, and the next weekend is mine, and I get to you know go out and have my fun. And she like. Well, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to tell y'all what the situation was, but. And I was like, well, bump it. And she was like, well, if you can't live by my house, live by my house, you can go. And I was like, well, fine, I'm gone. So I packed my stuff. My cousin Boo Boo tried to stop me. He was like, man, do you know she don't really mean it? I said, no, she always saying that with the time. I'm like, did say that a lot. And I was just tired of it. And so, yeah, I packed my stuff and I left. And I was like, look. His grandmama said, as long as she got a home, I got a home, so that's where I'm finna go. And I did. And I ended up staying down there for, I think, like, maybe almost a week. And then he finally got out. And he was, like, heated that I was there. And I was like, what? And he was like, I don't want her here while I'm not here. Blah, blah, blah. And I was just, like, crying because I'm like, bro, I don't think all this stuff for you. Like, trying to make sure your family get the message and stuff. And you just going to curse your girl out okay okay so you know after the the whole situation died down or whatever he was like uh, so what happened i was like well you know it was my weekend my mama didn't want me to do it and she kicked me out he was like for real i said yeah like what the hell he was like but did she say you come back i said she never mentioned that to me so I left, like, I don't want to go back, but, like, she's going to keep saying it, so, there's no need. We went on my mama's house, or whatever, we talked, or whatever, so yeah, much me and my mama squashed it, of course. So, he was all right, well, I guess you could stay with us, or whatever, so, I ended up moving in with them, staying with them, or whatever, everything was going pretty well, I couldn't complain, there's nothing to complain about, because... Nobody was really showing their true colors for me to even like have anything to complain about. 
So time goes on, whatever. Um, boom, I found out I'm pregnant. Actually, before he got out, I found out I was pregnant. And I was crying. I was 18 years old. I was like, I'm not ready for this. I would cry my eyes out. So it was like, oh, he gonna be happy. Don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. That's when he came home and was like, what? I was like, yeah. And he was like, what you wanna do? I was like, I'm not ready for this. Like, I don't know what to do. So we always had that plan. Like, we was gonna get rid of that one. But I ended up having a miscarriage. So there was no need for that plan because I miscarriage. What happened was the baby was growing in my fallopian tube, so it didn't actually go all the way down to my uterus. So, yeah, that's what happened. I didn't even realize I was miscarrying, but I was. And it hurt worse than a period. It's like a period, but one, like 2,500. For real, for real, that pain ain't no joke. So, anywho. I ended up um you know like I said we stayed together or whatever at his grandma's house and um oh sorry I'm going in with my LA pro girl Cecilia y'all so I ended up like I said moving in with his grandmother I was pregnant I had a miscarriage or whatever I had to go back and forth to the hospital and shit and my mom was like right by my side through the whole thing so I'm very grateful for her for that she was like super right there by my side and shit and um yep that was the end of that baby boom september comes around guess who's pregnant again three months after i had this carriage yep i need a pregnant again girl again okay so i can't find the top to this this is what i'm gonna go i need a pregnant again and once again, we was like, you know, we don't want to keep it. His main thing was, I'm, oh, excuse me, y'all, I'm burping. I don't want to be on child support. I'm like, oh, nobody finna put you on child support? Like, what? Well, what the fuck? Mm, I don't want to say that. Anyway, so that was his thing. He didn't want to be on child support. So I was like, fine, whatever. I'm not going to do that. So, I don't know. I had to talk to my mom. And she was like, well, what is it that you want to do? And I was like, I don't want to get rid of it. Like, I really don't. Like, something's in me telling me, don't get rid of this child. I prayed. And I remember after I prayed, I looked out the window and, like, three birds, like, flew over my building. Literally, right after I prayed. And I was like, I got you, God. I hear you. So, I took that and I ran with it. And I was like, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not going to put you on top of but I'm not going to get rid of it. So that same day, my mom was like, well, we need to go to the doctor. We're going to get you two and three nanotubes vitamins so we can prep for the baby to come. And after that, I was like, super sucky. I'm like, damn, I'm pregnant. I'm going to have this baby. This is great. Whatever. Some shit went down at his auntie house. I mean, his grandma house. And we ended up having to move in with my mama. And we also took in his niece. Because his grandmama couldn't do it. So, um... Once again, I'm there. I'm being supportive. I sent food for her. Cause some, you know, went down with their my daughter, and she didn't have no food in the house at the time. So I was like, okay, well, just take these, you know, kick a couple of these this food down there, or whatever, so the baby can eat and your mama can eat. It was some noodles, but it was something. You know what I'm saying? I tried. We didn't have much in our house either. So um, after whatever went down, went down at his grandma's house you know we took his niece in so we can help raise her while his grandmama had to try to find you know somewhere to go or whatever so we took her in temporarily just until like his grandma found somewhere to go and when she did we ended up you know giving her back to her grandmama and her grandmama ended up taking the rest of the way we still have my mama house living there Okay, so at this time, my cousin Boo Boo had already moved out. I think he moved to Massachusetts or he got his own apartment. I'm not really sure where he moved to. Girl, I'm looking like... Wah! Okay, so I'm not sure where he moved to. I can't freaking remember, but yeah, he had already moved out. So my mom was like, well, y'all can take that room or whatever. So I was like, cool. We took the room, blah, blah, blah. And 
Little did your girl know that his big mama literally lived around the ground corner from us, like down the street, like around the corner from us. So I was like, aww. But he wanted to see his son. So I was like, of course, you can bring him over here. Like, I'm not that type of person. I'm sorry I'm looking over here, y'all. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm like, I'm not that type of person. Like, of course, like, I would love to meet your son. So I met him, cute little boy. I think I met him when he was like four or whatever. Anyway, start, stuff started going downhill for me when I noticed how he had treated me one night. I don't know what I did to piss him off. I did something to piss him off. And he like literally put me in tears. And then he was like, let's And I was so hurt and like belittled. I was about to and he was like now come in he was like see that's how people gonna treat you nobody if you keep doing that nobody gonna love you like i do i'm not gonna make you do that blah, blah, blah. and he like hugged me and embraced me and i was like so confused he was like i love you but you can't blah, 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 blah. and i'm like okay 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 like he broke me down i was like 18 years old young as fuck like, what the fuck just happened like i didn't know what was going on like i was so confused y'all i was <laughs> It was the worst feeling in the world to be treated like that. Like, and I still stayed. Like, I didn't even notice that was like a, like a form of it. Like, that was like the beginning of it. Like, everything was finna snowball, Just little, little by little, was finna snowball. So I remember I was in like super pain. Like, I was in so much pain one time while I was pregnant, and. Um, I was like, Mom, I can't, I can't, like, I literally was, like, hunched over on my mom's lap, and she was like, you want to go to the hospital? I'm like, Mom, please, like, I don't know what's going on, I'm hurting so bad, and he was, like, so mean about it, he was like, you better not be lying, I'm like, what I gotta lie for? My mother was pissed, she was like, she not finna sit here and lie, I said she hurt for no reason, she hurt and she hurt me. so he was like, man, whatever, he walked in the room. So we went to the hospital, come to find out I was super dehydrated. So they had to keep me so that way they can give me the fluids I needed. So I had to stay in the hospital for at least like three days. Like I was badly dehydrated. And he did not visit me. He didn't show up. He didn't even call me to see if I was okay. None of it. Oh my God, that just happened. Hope it's not verbal. Oh, it's not. It just wasn't snapped. We don't you know, fix that real quick. But yeah, he didn't check on me to see if I was okay. He didn't call my room. None of it. So finally I got out of the hospital. Um I think I caught the bus home. You got caught the bus home and my stepfather came and got me. I can't really remember. It's been so long ago. But um yeah. Um I got home or whatever. And uh, I had an ultrasound to do, and my brother Alex came with me to the ultrasound. He did. Okay, so now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and set this with the translucent spray um, powder. So he didn't end up coming with me. It, and we saw my first baby, my Azaria. We saw her for the first time, and I was like, oh my God, like I'm really pregnant and stuff. And it was like super dope. So. After the ultrasound, I went home, and he wasn't there. He came, like, i say, like, five minutes since I had been home. And I was, like, um, looking. And the motherfucker had a hickey. Yes, girl. You heard right. You heard what I said. Can he I was so mad. I was like, what's that on your neck? He was like, what's on my neck? I said, it's like a red something on your neck. Here, I'm my son. Oh yeah, I went over uh, to see my son and I was sitting on the couch and stuff and watching him play on the floor. And she leaned over the couch, sucked my neck and I pushed her off and I tried to get a, uh, a metal hanger to like, you know, get it up, but I guess I didn't get it. I'm like, in my mind. Nigga, you lie. While I was in the hospital, dehydrated, in pain, 
We was getting off each other out. Okay. Boom. We move out. We ended up moving in with my best friend. Yes. Because we were waiting for this apartment to be ready for us. It was like Section 8 apartment. I think me and my mom and us, we got into it or something. She was like, y'all can leave or something. I don't really remember how that went down. But I know we ended up moving in with my best friend. She was like, yeah, y'all can stay with me or whatever. And it was just, just until we get out. Because he had already filled out for an apartment for Section 8. And, you know, he knew somebody there that can help us. So we ended up, you know, staying with them just until, you know, we can do our thing. I'm going to contour using this little baby right here it's almost gone it's like, you know, using it like crazy and i'm gonna use my urban studio brush but you know everything was going smooth everything was going all right living there whatever until everything wasn't until everything wasn't he told me that my best friend was trying to hit on him and i believe that shit like a dumbass, I believed it. And I was like, what? And you know, like, just a lot of shit. I'm not trying to put that part of that business out there, but it's just a lot of shit that went down in that situation. And I've apologized to my best friend about it. We good now, we, we sisters, we good. And um, she was like, girl, don't even worry about it. Like, I get it, trust me, I get it, so. So we ended up parting ways. I had stopped talking to her. He was like pretty much cutting people off from me. That's how you know, I gotta take these earrings off y'all. That's how you know you in an abusive relationship when they make you cut off everybody that you love that actually do care about you. And they got control over you, bruh. You in an abusive relationship and it's time to wake up and get the fuck out. But I followed his lead because I'm like, that's my man, this is what I'm gonna do. So we ended up having to leave because of a situation that happened I'm not gonna tell you but we ended up having to move and it wasn't because of that situation but something else occurred and we moved in with the deacon of this church we were going to and he was like y'all can stay and it, I think we was only like maybe three days away from getting into the apartment so once that happened we finally got into the place we moved in there the pastor helped us move in everything was peachy king you know once we moved in, we moved his grandmama in, you know, because she needed a place to stay, of course. She couldn't work anymore, so she stayed with us along with her granddaughter. And everything, well, she didn't move in until later on down the line, so it was just me and him. But everything was going good. Everything was going really well. Like, I was pregnant. I was arguing, he tried to make sure you know, I walked all the time, we took pictures, like it was just like happy moments. And it was like those only two times that he had done anything like the time he told me to fucking throw, and the one when he got mad at me when he thought I was faking. That was the only two times that anything like really happened. After my oldest was born, that's when everything like blew up. I'm gonna dust this off everything like hit the fan everything like it just spun and spiraled out of control the first time he hit me um he told me to ask the pastor to help us out with some groceries she had already been helping us and stuff and uh she had got really fed up she was like look i got my own house to think about i can't keep coming out of my pocket to help y'all get food I can't do it this time which which I understand like because she helped us out with a lot I'm talking money food clothes all of it like she just came through so I totally totally understand where she's coming from like you know she can only do but so much she has a husband at home she needs to take care of she has a house that she has to take care of she can't take care of us and her home you know we grown so I understood. I was like, okay, I got it. Yes, ma'am. We driving back from church. He didn't go to church this time. That that Sunday, he didn't go. So, um, he was like, so what she say? I was like, she said she can't do it. Boom. He immediately flipped the hell out. 
What did you tell me? What did you tell him? I'm like, I told her what you told me to say. I repeated exactly the way he said. I didn't tell you to say that. I didn't tell you to say that. I'm like, oh my God. So I'm thinking to myself, like, let me call her. Just so, you know, she can talk to him. I was like, I'm finna call Miss Daisy. Or whatever, that's her name. I should have said it. I was trying not to say names, but whatever. So I called her. And I was like, I'm um, trying to get in touch with her. I don't think she was answering. And the next thing you know, girl, I'm holding the baby in my hand. Wow. No, no, no. I rolled the baby out of her room. I sat down in the hallway. But I didn't realize I said her next, like, like, next to the trash. He was here. He was like, you're sitting on the fucking baby next to the trash? He storms in the room while I'm sitting on his grandmama bed on the phone, waiting for the phone to pick up the phone. And literally slaps me so hard that I fall on the floor. And then, before I can even get up, he jumps on me and jumps me. So that was the first time I had ever got hit. And I was like, just taken back. Like, what the fuck? Like, even now, it's like a twilight zone to me. Like, what the fuck? So, um, his grandmother was like, get off her. Get off her, get off her. And you know, he's steady going off, steady going off. And yeah, he's steady going off, steady going off, steady going off. And so I go, I grab my daughter and I take her into the living room. Before I know it, while she's in my hand, I'm getting choked. Literally cannot breathe. Literally. We're on the couch. Like this. Like cannot breathe while she's in my hand. His grandmother's like, get off of her like literally trying to beat him i was damn near to death damn near like when i said no oxygen was getting to me none i couldn't even gasp for air so she was like give me the baby give me the baby give me the baby so i sit in the chair that was next to the couch and he's steady like go on off on me just go on off on me go on off on me and he he kept slapping me upside my head and I kept yelling him. I said, stop hitting me, stop hitting me. And I guess it made him mad and he like jabbed me in the jaw. And oh my God, I was like, whoa. I was in the twilight zone. He finally left. His grandmother was like, get the fuck out of here, get the fuck out of here. He left or whatever. And I just couldn't believe what had happened. I was just like stuck like what the freak just happened to me just like what happened to me what did that really go down like that he comes back in the house he's like so I'm like stuck like I can't believe that actually like really happened to me or whatever and I'm sitting here stuck like what in God's name just happened. So he comes back in the house and he's all like, I'm sorry, I won't do that again. I was just like pissed off. Blah, blah, blah. This and that. Like I said, I've never been through a situation like this, so I'm not sure what the fuck to do. And I'm just like, it's okay. And he was like, if you wanna hit me, hit me. Like, come here, just hit me. And I'm scared. Like, nigga, I don't wanna hit you. <laughs> you might hit me. So he was like, just hit me, please, just hit me back, just hit me back. And I was like, no, it's okay, it's okay. He was like, you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. He was like, okay, all right, um, listen, I'm finna hit it back outside, whatever that is, and I'll be back, you know, wait up for me. And I was like, yeah, I'll wait up for you. <sighs> like an idiot. But I had got super tired that night, and I ended up falling asleep, girl. I was so scared. When he came back and saw me sleep, I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I fell asleep on you. I was supposed to stay up. He was like, no, you good. You good. You good. Don't worry about it. Like, I fucked up. I'm this, I'm that. I did that wrong. Boom, boom, boom. I was like, okay, cool. Things are fine again. I'm not getting hit. We're lovey-dovey. We're good. Okay. After that, things really got out of hand. It came to the point where... I got knives pulled out on me. Um, it was one day he just bullied me 
for no reason like I was getting bullied like I was just like please just leave me alone leave me alone leave me alone leave me alone he wouldn't leave me alone he had me cuffed up in a corner and I'm literally crying he put me in a headlock and everything like not this side of my tooth out that's why I got a no tooth in now and it just was bad like it was just a really really bad situation okay so what I did I couldn't find my eyeliner so what I did is use some eyeshadow and my ankle brush and just put that one off camera. And it actually came out not bad, so kudos to that. Okay, so yeah, it started spiraling completely out of control, y'all. Like, it got really, really bad. So I was trying to um, go back to school for my GED and I was trying you know just to try to get my independence back because I started realizing it came a point where I started realizing like girl this is not the life you picture for yourself something has got to give you need to make a change like I slowly just started waking up and when I tell you like I cut off all family, all friends. I wouldn't talk to nobody. I wouldn't talk to my mom. I wouldn't talk to my dad, my sisters, my brothers, my cousins. I was like literally in a prison, trapped. And anytime I try to get out, he would threaten to take my daughter. Like he would get mad at me and be like, oh, well, you could pack your shit and leave. And I'd be like, please. I used to beg. I'm like, please, please, please don't, don't do that. Please don't kick me out. Please don't kick me out. And then it got to the point where he kept saying it. Like, if you keep saying something, eventually somebody's going to get tired of it. So I got tired of it. And I was like, okay, well, I will. And I started packing up my stuff. And he would keep me there by saying, but you're not taking my daughter. Oh, well, then I might leave it. <laughs> I'll be damned if I leave it out my child. That's just not going to happen. So that's how, that was a way for him to keep me there. And I would literally try to take Azaria, out of, my daughter, out of his hands and... He wouldn't let me get her and I wouldn't leave like I'm not gonna pack my stuff and leave and you just not gonna let me get my child like I fought for my daughter like that's just not gonna happen so what I'm gonna do now is put on my kiss lashes oh y'all cannot see that that is bright this I am the kiss lashes so Oh, that ripped. That ripped. So. I know y'all probably sitting here like, girl, you should be crying. And blah, blah, blah. No. This happened like freaking 12 years ago. And I'm just now revealing my story. So. That's why I have no tears in my eyes. But. It's a sad story nonetheless because it's my story, you know what I mean? And I don't know, maybe somebody that has been through it can learn from it and learn the signs of it. So that's why I wanna tell it. But anyway, um, yeah, that's how he would try to keep me there. So like I said, I wanted to start school and I was like really trying to get myself together like I can't be stuck in this funk like he wasn't working all the money was coming off of me from uh, welfare yes I was on welfare welfare and you know he had a job but he ended up losing the job and it was just too much luckily our rent was paid up like six months in advance and we didn't even freaking know until the lady told us like y'all know y'all ahead so we were like so good on paying it or whatever so i was like well let me you know try to start going back to school so i started like I, at the time i didn't know how to do my hair i really didn't i didn't know how to do hair i didn't do, how to do makeup none of it so i would just be trying girl so He's the one who was like, oh, you should wear makeup. I tried to do it, it wasn't working. I was like, man, the makeup shit ain't for me. But anyway. <laughs> okay, but anyway. 
Um, I was like throwing on wigs on my hair because my hair had started falling out bad. I wouldn't take care of it. I didn't know what to do when I used to have a head full of head. Hair. Head full of head? Okay, girl. Head full of hair. And it just was like from all the stress and stuff, like it really like took a toll on my body that I didn't notice and it took a toll on my hair but that I did notice. Like I would wear scarves on my hair every day because my hair would never be done or I never had the money for it. Like the way I dress now and the way I look now, like was not how I was looking back then. Like I was bad. I was bad off y'all. So freaking bad off. It was terrible. So one day, because I would like throw on a wig or whatever, and you know, just so you know, I could look decent while I'm going to school, like, because I didn't know how to do my hair for it. So I was like, well, let me toss a wig on or something. Because past that, gave me a wig. And she was like, well, you know, try this, you know, you know, make yourself look cute. Because at first, my hair was like, you know, mm -hmm, girl. You know, those was like, perms was like, shit. And so I was like, I'm letting my lashes dry right now with glue and I'm gonna go in with my dream at mousse dark right now mm. go in with this I love this stuff but yeah I was trying like when I was pregnant it was nothing like girl was looking good but after pregnancy is when you could see all that stress on me and it was just bad terrible just insane so um what's happened um he was mad about a lot of things when it came to me like <laughs> girl i was just not enough i wasn't i wasn't enough for him i wasn't what he wanted me to be i wasn't who he wanted me to be I remember it was a time where he was like, well, you know, I, I usually go for the light skin, long hair girls, but, you know, I see something special in you, blah, blah, blah. Just like, bruh, that's what you used to. Leave me the fuck alone. Or like, if a pretty girl walked walk down the street, I remember it was this real pretty dark skin girl with short hair. She was wearing this cute white button up. I remember like it was just because she was really looking cute. She had like a short, you know, Holly Berry cut. You know that short short haircut with the um she had like a, a real white button up with some light blue jeans some black flats and she was looking so pretty and she had like a wife beater on it was a dark shirt i think it was like a dark black wife beater or whatever but she was looking really pretty walking down the street and he gonna say see why you can't dress like that nigga i said well if you stop taking my money then i go shopping and dress like that he got mad and walked across the street from me. Oh, you mad because I told the truth? The truth is, like, every time my money come in, I can't buy nothing for myself. You want to take it and spend it on you? That's why I can't get dressed and do my hair and do all that? Okay, boo. I got you. So, there was one time he didn't hit me because we was outside. Never hit me in front of people. I was always in the house so nobody would know what the hell was going on. Mm -hmm. So, anyway... After that, or whatever, like I said, he would like try to keep me by keeping, you know, right, Azaria, my daughter, and I wasn't having it. Like, if she gotta stay, so do I. Cause I see how you do your son, and you not finna do my daughter like that. And I was like, huh, I was, I'm breathing. No, I will lay my life on the line for that girl. So, which I did. I took beatings every day staying there. Every day. I got cheated on, I got lied to, I got beat all of it like it all happened so like i said starting school whatever one day he was like where are you going i was like to school he was like nah nah you trying to look cute for that guy in school i said look cute for who nobody's even looking my way i'm trying to get my ged that's what i'm trying to do nah 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 you trying to go to that school so you can look cute for some stuff i don't want you going you can't go you can't go and i'm like I'm not even trying to look good for nobody. He's like, shut the fuck up. I don't care what you're talking about. I don't want you going there no more. No, nah, no, nah, you ain't really trying to go there to get no education. It's some dude up in there you trying to. I'm just like, bruh. Mm -hmm. 
the security's coming out like a mug. Like a mug. Know the signs, girls. Know the signs. I literally went to class to learn. Nobody was looking my way. I had a raggedy ass wig on and trying to look decent. The fuck looking my way. It was women in there getting a GED that looked way better than me. Makeup, hair, and all. No fucking up me. Boy. So anyway, mm, 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 mm. all right, y'all. Putting these lashes on on camera for you. So don't laugh at my struggle. I gotta be quiet now because I gotta, gotta focus. Okay, this is for this one. did good for y'all because last time i tried to record this omg when i say it was a fight mm, y'all would have been laughing your asses off at me because i could not get them lashes right okay okay i see how y'all do me they did me justice today oh wait that's just one white yet I ain't put the hook on on but that white is the glue so that'll dissolve or whatever but yeah they they really have insecurities and y'all need to watch out for that the insecurities will come out and they'll influctuate that on you so give me a sec y'all let me put the second lash on so <laughs> the worst of your see is the glue, so oh snap. So I'm gonna let that dry before I continue on but yeah so he stopped me from going to school because he felt like I was going there just to fuck with guys and I was learning and it was a dude they were trying to look good for and all that and all that stuff. <sighs> oh my goodness are you serious are you freaking kidding me like I told you what I'm going there for and it damn sure you know dude Nobody do nothing in it for me. They ain't in the same boat as I am. Shit. So, ended up stopping. Or whatever. And let me tell you what woke your girl up. One day. No, one morning. We were in bed. And he didn't know, but I wasn't asleep. He was watching me sleep. He was watching me sleep. And um, he was like rubbing my face, caressing me. It was like a real, like it felt like a real genuine loving moment. And. Uh, I woke up because I was not asleep. I pretended I was asleep, but I woke up or whatever. He was like, hey, you hungry? You want some breakfast? And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I asked him, I was like, you hungry? You want some breakfast? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can eat. I was like, okay. I forgot what he said he wanted. I think he wanted to ask the eggs, ground beef and eggs that he kept fixing. I still don't eat that to this day. Like, I do not touch that. At first, it was good, but I kept eating that shit too much. That's that gel shit. But 
I was like, okay. And he liked it on bread. So I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and fix it. But the problem was it wasn't enough bread. So I was like, oh man, you know, I can't remember. I was like, it's not enough bread. And he was like, what? I just. That just went out the window, y'all. What? I just bought bread. You told me it was enough. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was enough bread. <laughs> no, no, no. Y'all always want to eat up the shit in this house. Blah, 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 blah. He put me and his grandmama in her room. Mind you, the baby is up. I got the baby in my hand. Why I mean, my first one was still <laughs> little. And he swung on his grandma. He said, yo, fat ass always want to eat. She said, don't you swing on me. Don't you touch me. He said, ain't nobody even hit you. Like, I was just blow. Like, did he just swing on me? Well, he's beating my ass, so I don't even know why I'm surprised. But i never seen him gun for her. So, next thing you know, he turns his attention to me. You stupid bitch. Bah, 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 bah. Boom. He slaps him inside my head. Mind you, again, the baby is in my hand. He slaps him inside my head. I hit him back. Huh? Oh, you want to hit back? You want to hit back? He slaps him inside my head again. I said, stop hitting me. The last hit I got was a punch in my back. And it hurt me so bad. It made me bend like this. And my mouth was open. And I could not breathe. I couldn't speak. Nothing would come out. And all he said was, yeah, yeah, now, come on. Hit me, hit me. I like that. I like that. And I was like, he left. His grandmother was done with him. He apologized to her. Once again, apologized to the whole family. Right. Okay. That situation woke me up. Woke me up. I was done. All right. So it's funny how God works. His motherfucking ass. Oh. The fucking ass ended up getting a boil in his booty. Mm hmm, y'all, y'all heard me. A boil. Y'all see that? A boil. And he needed somebody to take care of his thinking boiled ass. So, who else can do it but me? So I did. Do y'all know that the whole time I was taking care of him, I got cursed out? Left and right. You stupid bitch, this, you stupid bitch, that. I can't stand you. You this, you that, you that, you this. Really? I didn't care. I didn't care. Like, at that point, it wasn't even phasing me no more. I was like, bro, you keep saying the same old stuff. And there's my brush. <laughs> yes, mistakes happen when you do a makeup. It can happen on camera, too. Anyway, I was just, like, so over it. I was so over it at this point. I just was like, bro, he has nothing different to say, but calling me a stupid bitch, and he can't stay in me, and... <sighs> whatever at that point i really didn't care i remember it was a situation when he had the ball he literally was on the toilet crying like a bitch i was like to myself i was like is this fucking crying and i was like no no fuck that i'm a man I'm a man. It's a manly ass crying over a fucking ball. Fuck out of here. 
ran this nigga some bath water and everything. Go get such and such. She don't know how to do it better than you. You really think I'm gonna call some bitch up in my house to see you ass naked and try to take care of you? Not gonna happen, sir. Not gonna happen. He gets mad. Get out of my face, bitch. I don't want to deal with you no more, you stupid, stupid bitch. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. You see, it's not phasing me, so it's bothering him even more that I'm not crying or getting upset. I think it was just angering him that at the end of the day, I still wasn't getting phased by it. It was like, you just say the same little stupid shit every day to me. Like, I'm everything but a child of God, so at this point, you can't make me cry no more. I didn't heard it all. I've been hearing it for a year and a half now. Like, bruh, you don't have nothing else to say. Nothing. Like, you can't come up with nothing else except that I'm a stupid bitch. Okay, so he gets up, he gets dressed, he's like, um, I'm finna get such and such to whoop your ass. I'm finna get such and such to whoop your ass. I'm like, okay. Didn't say nothing. Just, okay. So, I'm sitting in the house, minding my business, reading the Bible. No, I didn't even read the Bible. I was laying in the bed, watching television, because he said he was supposed to get some light with my ass. So I just laid in the bed and was watching TV. Just waiting, like, I wonder who it is. I keep looking this way, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, where's my lips though? I think I'm gonna go with this, like, mm -mm, I'm recording. I'll be out there, go, thank you. I think I'm gonna go with like this uh, kind of burgundy color. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. I think, like I said, I think it was pissing him off that it really wasn't phasing me no more at all the shit he was saying. So it was like, bruh. Okay. I just mixed this and this, these two colors. This is orange, even though it's coming up a different color and that's red. I mixed those two and I'm gonna go into my eye already. And it just bothered him. It did. I can tell because he kept getting madder and madder and I wasn't saying or doing anything or flinching or nothing. And it just like was getting under his skin. So he was like, I'll be back. I'm gonna get such and such. She gonna kick your ass, blah, blah, blah. So like I said, I was upstairs waiting. Like whatever, I'm just gonna wait for this shit. Boom, I get, cause we had a, uh, like an intercom. Boom, the intercom thing going. I go up to the intercom, I'm like, hello? Yeah. Ah, oh, on crib, girl. On oh, crib, girl. I'll fuck you up. You fucking with my nigga, Mike? I'm like, no, ain't nobody fucking with him. Nah, that's not what the fuck I heard, bitch. Da -da 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 -da. Come downstairs, bitch. Come downstairs, I'll whoop your motherfucking head. Okay. Give me a sec. I decide to put on my boots, put on some sweatpants. I tied my hair up, put on a big shirt, and I was about to head downstairs. I literally was at my fucking door, my front door. I'm finna align my lips with this brown liner and then I'm gonna go over with this cute little beige color to match, you know. So I literally was about to open the damn door and his grandma, she had, she had my oldest in the room with her sleeping. She came, she came out the room and she said, don't you go down them steps. Uh, what? Lady, I gotta go. I just got called out. She said, don't you go down the steps. I said, Grandma, she just threatened me. Like, she just threatened to whoop my behind. Like, what, what you mean don't go down the steps? She said, I'm telling you, don't go down the steps. You don't know what he got. You don't know what she got. You don't know what's going to happen to you if you go down the steps. Don't go down the steps. You got this little girl to think about. Fuck him. That was her exact words. I'll never forget it. Those were her exact words. She said, I'm not playing with you. Don't go down the steps. Girl was ready. 
ready. I was dressed to fight. She came out the room. She said, don't you go down on steps. I said, okay. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. So I went in the living room and I sat down and I thought about it. I was like, no, Dad, I'm gonna go downstairs. Then I thought about it again, about what she said. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna go. I'm not even gonna do it. I took my shoes off, took everything off, got comfortable again, went in the living room. I grabbed the Bible. I opened up the Bible. No lie, y'all. It opened straight up to the verse that said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. When I, soon as I opened up the Bible, that's what it opened up to. And right there, I knew that was a sign of God telling me I made the right decision to listen to his grandmama and did not go down those steps. That's how you know God is real. I opened up the book, literally opened up the Bible and it went straight to that page, straight to that passage is what I looked at. I wasn't looking for that passage. I just opened the book and there it was. And I just read it and just kept reading it. I was like, wow. I was blowed. I was blowed. And I was just blown away when it when that happened. I just couldn't believe like that actually happened. So I just kept reading that verse over and over and over and over and over again. And um What? Oh shit, sorry babe. I'm trying to record. What's going on? I don't think so much anyway, so you're right to get mad at me. Come on now. So anyway. Okay, I need you out because I'm recording. You don't want to hear this. I'm doing a story time. You your uh, thank you. I'm doing a story time. You're not gonna like this story time. Flashing pictures in front of the camera too? No. I took that out. Stop! I was in your story time. No! Bye, Joe. You messing me up and you're making me mad now. What's your definition of story time? When you telling a story about something at an event that happened in your life. With pictures? No, not with pictures. You don't have to be a picture. Oh, you telling them a story while you're doing your makeup? Yes. Oh, that's dope, babe. Thank you. My idea is a good thing, too. Add that. No, that ain't got nothing to do with the story time that I'm telling. Okay. The story that. time you, I'm telling you hate, so I can't. Wow. What's, what, what's the topic? You know the topic. Oh, you talking about women? It's like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just giving, you know girls you know read the signs and stuff and learn from me oh that's brothers that's what i said it's brothers oh thank trash, you babe trash, trash. he loves me i got the point wow. no get, i'm gonna kick you in anyway so yeah um oh my god he messed me it's up stupid remember i got this bro. Get out! Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Alright, let it back. Love you too. That, um, he came upstairs and he was like, um, oh, why you didn't come downstairs? Why you didn't come downstairs? You were scared, huh? You were scared, huh? I was like, no, not really. <laughs> I said I was about to come downstairs, but. I decided not to give that stuff entertainment. I decided not to entertain y'all. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, you scared, you scared. I was like, okay, you know, basically call it what you want. I don't care. So, needless to say, nothing happened that night. He called me to the room, come on, you coming to bed? Like, everything is cool. I'm looking at this nigga like, bro, you just do not know. I don't even want your motherfucking ass no more at all. I'm like, over that shit, like, boy, bye. So, still in pain and sick from the hole in his little ass. Ooh, this light ain't doing your girl justice right now. Uh, anyway, 
he uh wanted me and the baby to lay next to him and stuff and I really was not feeling that. I was like, mm, I don't know, the blue light gonna have to do y'all. Like I told y'all, I don't wanna do this like stuff. I really wasn't feeling that. I was just like, <sighs> I was disgusted. I wouldn't look him in the eye. I didn't want him to touch me. We had stopped having sex. I was just like, turned all the way off. So, now you gotta smell the cheese. Yeah, full voicemails. Lord Jesus, somebody loves me. So after that, whatever. That's when I started knowing that people actually heard the abuse was going on. It got to the point where even his sister was staying with us and they wouldn't call the cops. The cops came to my apartment because the neighbors in them heard me getting my ass beat and everybody covered up for him. Point back here, I'm not shit cold shit. Everybody covered up. Oh, we heard something. He's like, shut the fuck up. Don't say nothing. Yep, he sure did. Sure did. Sure did. Sure did. He sure did. Told me to shut the fuck up and not say nothing. Mm hmm. So, anyway, opening my eyes part, I was like, bruh, I'm done. I can't even fucking do this no more. So. My brother, at the time, he was staying with my dad, and he had came in from out of town, and he was, you know, I, I haven't, I hadn't seen my baby brother, and at that time, I hadn't seen him in a minute, so I was like, oh my God, my baby brother's in town, I want to see him. Little did I know that my aunt was in town, too. So, um, oh, Tyrese is in town, you want to see him? At the time, my dad had temporary custody of him. And I was like, yes, yes. He was like, all right, all right. I was like, we're going to catch the bus. We're going to come by. We caught the bus. We came we came by, whatever. We caught the bus. No, 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 no. What happened was he was trying to delay me from even going over there because he didn't really want to go. He made me sit outside, wait for him while they was in this bandit house called The Mansion where they go smoke weed and stuff. And he made me wait outside, buses steady passing, steady passing, steady passing. He comes out, he's like, babe, I'm sorry, but maybe we can go see him tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I want to see my brother now. I don't even think he's going to be there tomorrow. Like, I want to go see him now. I think he was leaving the next day or something. And he was like, well, you know, we're on the bus, babe, blah, 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 blah. I was like, like, really down about it. And then I was like, well, at the time, we ain't had no phone. We had a phone, so I was like, well, let me use the neighbor phone downstairs to let my mama know, because she already knew what was going on. She was like, you need to get out of there, the neighbor downstairs from us. She was like, she was, I think she, she was into that African heritage stuff, so she was like, you need to get out of there, you know what I'm saying? You need to move out. She had already been through an abusive situation. It was time she would let me use her phone or whatever, so she was really cool about it. So I was, you know, I knocked on her door. I was like, hey, I'm sorry to bother you, but um, I was wondering, can I use your phone to call my mom? And she was like, yeah, she'll come in. I called my mom and I was like, hey, mom, look, we're not going to be able to make it because it's getting late and all these buses and passes by and I don't even think I got the bus fare for it. And so she was just like, how much do you need? And my mom was talking because she was like too mad. And I was like, wait a minute, mom. Wait a minute, hold on. I said, what? She said, how much do you need? I said, it's just about $2. She said, hang up the phone. I was like, for real? She said, hang up the phone. I said, okay. I said, mom, I'm on my way. She was like, all right, all right, all right. I said, yeah, my neighbor, she going to help me out with the money. She said, okay, okay. I see when you get here. She was so overjoyed. She said, get that baby and you and don't come back. When I give you this, don't come back. I was like, okay, you need to get out of this situation. I've been in the same situation you was in. Get away. Get out of here. So I went back upstairs. I was like, well, the neighbor helped me out with some money. I'm going to go. He was like, you sure you want to go? I was like, yeah. He was like, it's kind of late. I said, I can always ask James to bring me back. It's not a problem. James is still at work. So I was like, I can always ask him to bring me back when he get off. So he was like, all right, you just be careful. Call me when you get there. I was like, cool. He waited at the bus station with me. The bus stop with me. The bus stop was like literally right across the street from the house. So we went over walk across the street. He waited. The bus came. I left. I was like relieved to get away from him. I finally get to my mom's house. I didn't even know my Aunt Barbara was there. My Aunt Barbara was there and I was like, yeah, he was trying to stop me from coming. She was like, I figured that's what it was and this and that. But that's, by this time, my mother already knew what was going on. She already knew the abuse was happening and stuff. And so, I'm gonna finish y'all. 
way, but let me finish up the story. And so I finally revealed it to my Aunt Barbara. And my Aunt Barbara told me like, uh, she heard that things were happening, but she wasn't, she wasn't, she's not the type to believe what comes out of everybody's mouth. She wants to hear it from the horse's mouth. So when she finally heard it from me, she was like, wow, everybody was telling me, but I just want to hear from you. You know, I don't do that. He says, she says stuff. And I was like, I know. So when my mother's ex-husband kind of got off of work, he was too tired to take me home. And I was like, oh boy, this is going to be a problem. Now I'm going to get my butt Now I'm going to feel the pain. Now this is the stuff that gets me beat. So my mom was like, don't worry about it. We'll take you home the next day. The next day came. I was so shook, like shook. My mother had to get some oil and pray for me. Like I was so shook. And my Aunt Barbara and my mom was like, we're not going to let you go up in there by yourself. You don't have to worry about it. Like, we're going to come with you. We're going to come upstairs with you and everything. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Like, I was literally in tears. Like, that's how scared I was. And so we get to the house. And I'm like, I'm home or whatever. And his grandmother was sitting in the living room. And I, you know, let her hold the baby. And she was like, she whispered to me. She was like, what is she doing here? What are you doing here? And I was like, what? She was like... He is going to get you. He was like, she was like, um, I was like, why? He was like, he is mad. It don't matter that they came upstairs. When they leave, he's going to get you. He is going to get you. Get, I need y'all to get her and his baby and get out of here. Now, the plan was that I was going to pack my stuff little by little and then leave. But when she said that, my aunt was like, look, get your stuff. So I started packing up, packing up, packing up, packing up. He calls my name. I'm like, hey, he was like, who y'all here? I was like, my mom and my aunt. He was like, oh wait, she here? Like, your, your aunt Barbara here? I was like, yeah, she here. Well, tell us that, come here. Well, he was under the blanket. So I was like, are you sure? He was like, yeah, I'm under the blanket, I'm good. What the fuck? I'm like, okay. That's how I knew I was gonna get got when they left. My aunt comes in the room, hey, hey nephew. She was like, watch this. She was playing it off in a bit. Hey nephew, what's up, blah, 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 blah. blah. Oh, what's up? I miss you, Auntie. Oh, I miss you too. Yeah, I'm in town. I just want Amanda to spend, you know, a little more time. Me spend the night with me at, um, you know, her mama house before we go, or whatever. So, you know, I just, I just really missed her. Blah blah. He was like, Oh, y'all finna head back to the house? Like, yeah, okay. Well, I'ma come too. So I'm like, Oh shoot! Now he gonna want me to leave with him. She like, Oh no! Come on, nephew. Let's go. Let's go. She like, I got you. Don't even worry about it. Whole time we waiting for the bus and stuff. My mother, my aunt was like, uh, "Did you get your food, uh, food stamp card?" I was like, "Dang, I forgot about it." She said, "Don't worry, we get the Massachusetts shut that shit off." I said, "Okay, cool." I didn't get all the clothes that I needed to get, but I got most of them. So we get to my mom's house. We all having a good time and this and that. My mom was like, "Well, I need y'all to go to the store to go get some spaghetti sauce." We go to the store get some spaghetti sauce. He like, "I don't know about you, but I'm going home." I said, "Well, I haven't seen my aunt in a minute. I don't want to spend time with her." Well, I'm gonna go to church in the morning. Okay, well you can go ahead and I'm gonna spend time with my aunt. He left, no hugs, no kisses, no I love you. I wasn't on that no more. The next morning, I was gone. My aunt woke me up. She said, you still ready to go? I said, uh, yeah. Packed up whatever we had, me and my baby. And we was gone early that morning. And that was like a breather for me. Riding away from Jersey into a new environment was a relief because I I got away from it and I didn't want to go back it's not like I was looking out at the Jersey streets like oh my gosh should I get off this bus I should get off this bus it wasn't even like that y'all when she woke me up that morning and said I'm still going do you want to go I said yes and I got on that bus with her and we were leaving I felt free I felt relieved I felt a breath of stress, fresh air. To get out of that situation like that was a, a liberating feeling for me. And I vowed that I wouldn't let a man ever treat me or do me that way again. And I haven't. And to not go through that again is... It feels so good. And the reason why I wanted to share this story is to... To all you women out there, young, old, my age, watch the signs. Be careful. He may be sweet to you in the beginning, but if he starts slowly showing you the way he's going to treat you, 
that's how it's gonna be abuse is not fun it's hurtful it's not love and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy at all and I hope that you take from this video some pointers some advice I hope a lot of things I said has opened your eyes because this abuse is still around it's still going and I thank God for taking me out of that situation and blessing me with a beautiful family and I hope that this video helps I really do because it's, it's a terrible space it's a terrible place to be but when you finally open your eyes I was blessed enough to open my eyes there's women out here that's not blessed enough to have their eyes open and it's too late and they're not even breathing now so I thank God that he took the wool from over my eyes and said look baby girl I'm trying to slap some reality into you this is not where you're supposed to be and so I'm grateful and I'm blessed for that and I'm thankful to God that God my mom and my aunt I'm thankful for them to help me get out of that situation help me get me and my child get out of that situation because it's not a situation that anybody deserves to be in not even my worst enemy I would wish that on so I'm gonna put the number right here for anybody that needs help getting out of an abusive relationship a domestic violence relationship take it from me get out as soon as you can if you have family members that are willing to help let them because there's no telling if you're going to be able to breathe or not it's the worst situation you could be in and i don't wish it on my worst enemy i don't so once again this is the number to the hotline for domestic abuse um and i pray and i hope this video has opened your eyes and helped you and yeah that's how i got in and out of abusive relationship so i'm here right now talking to you guys i'm a survivor i'm out of it i'm good i'm happy i have a family i'm married and i'm looking back at all <laughs> Mm -hmm. so yeah let me show you my hair this is a hairstyle i did today mm -hmm. and i actually learned this from a girl that i watch on youtube and her name is the chic natural and she did this and i was like i'm gonna try that and so you know and this will keep me from flattening and ironing my hair so much so I'm definitely looking up different natural uh, natural protective styles to do because I don't want to keep constantly straightening out my hair. So with that being said, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also ring that notification bell. Follow me on my Instagram at inspired by Amanda and Wilkes. Also my uh, Facebook. And once again, I hope this video has inspired you to get out of a situation that you're in and push forward to new beginnings the situation that you're in if you are in one and like i said i thank god every day that i'm not so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye